So you've probably seen image data sets. You know, you generate GANs for pictures of people's faces. There's data sets that tell the difference between cats and dogs. But where do all these images come from? What if you want to create a GAN that generates pictures of, I don't know, frog statues? Where do you get these data from? Now, you can go out with your camera and snap all sorts of photos, but that takes a long amount of time. StyleGAN and some of these others where they frequently get these images from is the Flickr data set or online web service. I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Okay, so here we are at my GitHub repository, Pi Image Data. This is a small project that I put together. I might develop it into a full-blown package at some point and put it up on PyPy, but for now, it's just a couple of scripts that you use directly. Now, this video is going to have two parts. Part one is if you don't care that much about Python, you just want to go download a bunch of pictures of frog statues or fish or dogs or cats or whatever, whatever you want. I have some basic instructions here. One thing that is very important, and particularly if you're doing an academic paper, is the licenses. So all of Flickr images have a license associated with them. And my script lets you choose which of these licenses you would want to download. I tend to use the permissive ones that let me use things for copyright purposes. If you're going to upload a data set to Kaggle, and that's often what I'm doing, you want to use a permissive license. So let's take a look at how to actually use this Python program. And then the second part of the video, I am going to show you how to how it works because this gives you a great starting point. This is actually a fairly robust program. I've used it a number of times for image downloads and I design it so that it keeps going and downloads a large quantity of images. This is also sometimes better than using Google Images because Google Images, they change their format. I'm not entirely sure Google really likes you harvesting their images, but Flickr does have an API for this and I've seen it used in a lot of academic papers, so it, it, it seems to be okay. And you have rights to use the images so long as they're light, so long as they're attributed properly in the in the download. I also tend to not use the ones where I have to attribute because I'm going to download 10,000 images. I can't attribute everybody. So that's the ones that I choose. We'll we'll look at my config file. So you're going to use the flickr download.py. The only additional packages that it really you need to install are the Flickr API for Python and also Pillow, which is an image management system. You just run this file and it's going to use the config.ini file. Now the config.ini file is one of two files that you might want to modify. You'll definitely want to modify this. You have to register for a Flickr API access. So you need a Flickr account. You need to go into the account page and basically get an ID and secret that lets you log into Flickr. This is not actually your Flickr ID and password. This is a token that basically gets you, gets you access to it. I set this up a while back and just continue to use it. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward to get one of those. Now, I have a couple of sections in this config file. So download, this is the path that we're downloading to. Now, this is just on GitHub because the one that I'm going to actually run does have my credentials in here, so I'm not going to just broadcast that to YouTube. By the way, you can find quite a few of these ID and secrets for the API keys floating about on, on GitHub, and they seem to work just fine, so I think people accidentally expose their credentials to the world without realizing what, what they're doing. Now, the path is where all the images are going to go. Now, I am running this on Ubuntu, but this runs on Windows, Linux, Mac, whatever. I'm just demonstrating it in Ubuntu. I've got this ThinkPad P53 that Lenovo gave me for a couple of weeks for the channel, so we're, we're putting it to good use. Search term is what you're looking for. I want pictures of fish tanks. The reason for this is I am going to be demonstrating 
how to use StyleGAN to generate images. The first thing I'm trying is fish tanks. We'll, we'll see how that goes. I might try other things as well. Prefix is what it's going to put in front of the file name. So tropical as in tropical fish. And then update minutes. That's how often you want this to update to the log. The default logging.properties file that I have in here just logs everything to the console. But if you're running this on the cloud or something, you may want to log it to a, a different location. These are all of those licenses. These are the ones that I consider permissive that allow commercial use and don't require me to attribute. Not that I am against giving people credit for things. I have, I have things under copy left myself, like my book, but I'm going to download 10,000 of these. I can't attribute everybody. My, if I was doing an academic paper, my paper would be 10 pages and my thank you page would be probably 90. So that's that's the only reason I am doing it that way. And that's similar to how I've seen a lot of other, other papers do this. Max download, that is just how many files you want to limit it at. It will stop when it hits 100,000. Now, usually most searches that you deal with, it is not going to give you all the images that you asked for. This is kind of a testing thing if I just wanted to stop early. Usually what I will have to do is... Like I would do fish tank, tropical fish, aquarium, all kinds of things. As you do more and more though, you're going to get more junk images. Like aquarium might be the big building aquariums and those, those will, will give you junk images. We'll deal with junk images in a bit. And this is the source file. This is basically a CSV file that shows me all the URLs that I downloaded and the file name that it mapped it to. This is basically just my reproducible research artifact so that I know where all these images came from, just in case, I don't know, somebody tells me an image was, was not, should not have been in the data set. That way I, I have it so that I can at least go back to Flickr and say, here's where it was kind of thing. Now, processing. You may or may not want to do processing as part of your download step. Generally, I have sort of a pipeline that I do with images. So let me know in the comments if you would like to see more of the pipeline. I mean, part of my pipeline generally goes download all the images, then more advanced pre-processing. Like on StyleGAN, they did a lot of pre-processing on those images. They cropped them. They made sure all the faces were kind of pointing in the same way. We're not quite to end to end deep learning yet, but we're, we're getting there. So I, I give you the option to do some pre-processing here. The problem is when you're pre-processing, you are losing data that you will never ever get back. So sometimes I will set this processing to false, not pre-process, just download all my images. Then I have other scripts that I use that do more advanced image pre-processing like auto cropping and things like that. Again, if you'd like to see more of my pipeline, Definitely give me a like. That's how I know you're interested in this kind of video images. And let me know in the, in, in the comments. Next step in my pipeline is always, how do you get rid of junk images? So when I'm getting my fish tanks, there's all kinds of junk images. I just want to generate beautiful pictures of fish. But there's all kinds of things in there. I mean, cats love looking at fish tanks and human beings love taking pictures of their cats looking at fish tanks. I don't know what was up with this guy. He turned his car into a fish tank, but fun project, I guess. Point is, all those images you need to remove. In StyleGAN, they use something called Mechanical Turk to remove those. That's actually human beings that you pay like, I don't know, a penny a picture or something to to remove things and tag things. If you're interested in Mechanical Turk, I've definitely used that a couple of times for projects. It can, it, it can be quite useful. So let me, let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. I've also written some utilities that I might put into this, into this GitHub repo and do a video on where I am the Mechanical Turk. I, I am cropping or tagging or labeling my own images. And I, I've written a couple of utilities that let me just shoot through those as fast as possible. You don't want to be dragging images around in the operating system folders. I mean, that's you want to minimize the amount that you do per picture and just shoot through them. Once you crop those down, you can never uncrop them. So I sometimes prefer to pull everything just full resolution as it came from Flickr and, and not do the cropping later. That way, if I want to crop differently, I 
still have my original full-sized images to deal with. So here, processing true. If you don't want to process, just set that to false. It won't do any processing. Maybe you want square images. Square images are very common in machine learning. So if you want them square, kind of Instagram style, then say true. Minimum width and minimum height. Anything below this resolution is going to throw away. It's not even going to keep. Scale width and scale height. This is what you're going to scale it down to or up to. Scaling up to doesn't, doesn't do much for you other than making everything uniform. And then the image format, which is JPEG. Highly recommend JPEG over PNG in this case. Otherwise, your image directories are going to be massive. And often in pre-processing steps, I, I drop that JPEG down to a, a lower quality just, to, just so I can have a lot of images and not take a ton, a ton of space. I didn't put it as an option here. I often just hard code it is the JPEG image quality. I'll probably put that out here in a later version. Okay. So that's all of the configuration properties. You want to put that in for however you want this. I tend to do the prefix here for if I'm going to download several and I want a class, like if I wanted to download dogs and then download cats, for example, I might do dogs and then cats. And I like keeping these config files so that way I have reproducible research. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to open up a terminal window. I'm not even showing you the Python for my script yet. We'll get into that in part two, which is coming here soon. So, so far, does this seem pretty useful? If so, definitely give me a like. Let me know in the comments that you like this sort of thing because I would be glad to show you the whole pipeline if that's the sort of thing that would be useful to you. So I'm going to go into my projects directory and then the pi image data. And if you look at the files in here, these are the files. I'm going to do conda activate image uh, pi image data. I set that environment up in conda. You'd have to set it up on your own. The only two pip installs that you're going to really have is the Python Flickr API and also pillow. That's really all that this thing needs to run. I'll put a requirements txt file in there as well. And then you're going to want to run python flickr download.py and you just run it. It's going to read that config file that's right there, the config i and i, and also the logging properties file. Logging properties, see it's logging right now. I have specified to log to the console. If you're familiar with logging, you can, I mean, you can do all kinds of fancy things with Python standard logging. It's pretty similar to JVM logging. Okay, it is running. Now you're not seeing anything because it's going to wait until about a minute because that's what I specified as the update minutes over here. And then it's going to tell me an update as far as what it's doing while it's running. So let's look at the files that it's actually pulling. Now this one got done pretty quick. There was not a lot that it really found there. So it it did find, it found a fair number of images, but I mean, this can, I've seen this sometimes give me three, 4,000 images. You need to kind of just play with the, the keywords that it's searching on, or even run it a couple of times to, because it seems like Flickr does give you different results, but you can see some of the images here. It is definitely downloading aquarium fish for me. And we're going to see if I can generate a GAN to create this kind of thing. I don't, I don't know that it's going to be ideal, but it's 256 by 256. Gonna need to throw some serious GPU compute power at that. I'll probably adjust the images and other, other things at least a few times. I'll go through manually and remove the junk images that I was talking about before. But you can see you've got really quite a variety of these being, being downloaded. Now I wanna explain the names here. Notice this big long name, tropical hyphen blah, 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 blah. You might recognize that as a SHA hash. That is basically a encoding coding number, it's like a fingerprint for the original JPEG file or whatever we were pulling down from Flickr. That lets me basically be able to identify those and not re-download them over and over again and not have duplicates of the same image because you'll see the same image uploaded multiple times under different Flickr IDs. Quite, quite, quite common. You'll also see the same image cropped a bunch of different ways. That, unfortunately, I'm not detecting. So this, this is what it, what it looks like. If you rerun this and it detects that a image has already been downloaded, it's not going to re-download it. It's going to put that into the log and just continue. So that's how to use this program. 
Does this look useful to you? Definitely give me a like or subscribe to the channel. These numbers on the different videos, that's honestly what I look at to tell what topics to talk about in the future. This is particularly interesting to me because this lets me build up image data sets to truly create my own data sets for machine learning. Now let's look at the Python and enter part two where I show you the coding behind this. Now there's a lot of examples out there of downloading images from Flickr. I, most of them are just in a loop. If anything goes wrong, they just explode and that's, that's the end. I wanted something a bit more robust and I may continue to expand this. I'm thinking of putting in multi-threads just to really further increase performance. For now, it's single-threaded, mainly because I find that most of my downloads, they run maybe hour, hour and a half, and they'll download, I don't know, like 5,000 images or so, and then I have to go through and, and remove the various junk images. I put this into a class just so that I don't have all these global variables and things being passed around. The initialization, it reads the config parser, which is part of Python, and that lets me read that config file. And then I just go through and get all of these sections out of it and copy them into local variables. Now I'm skipping a little bit of error detection here. If you have a malformed INI file, it's probably simply going to, going to blow up here on a key not found exception. But that's, that's the way that I did it. The sources file is optional. If you don't want a sources file, if you don't need to track that, just leave that out. It'll run just fine. This is where I log into Flickr with the ID and password that you pass. Now notice, this is just security and software engineering, but notice I don't copy the ID in secret into a config variable. I prefer to keep the ID and password in RAM as little of time as possible. I don't like having them hanging around. This little function here is called reset counts. That just keeps track of all these counters as I am just providing stats. I keep track of time. So like I said, I've, I've ran this through a couple of projects and I've tried to make it pretty robust. It's, it handles errors. It, it's really a pretty good utility, I would say, on its, on its own. But in a lot of these research projects, you want to modify it to do kind of your own thing. And that's, that is basically what it's, what it's capable of doing. Now, I had a twin program of this that also did the Google image search. Let me know if you're interested in that one. I might resurrect it. Google changed some things. I don't know the current state of Google image search. They might be actively blocking that, but let me know if you've had any, any luck with that yourselves. This is my load image, and what it's doing is I'm basically calling the request package you might need to install that if it's not already there. It's, it lets Python do HTTP and download stuff into your, into your file. And we, we basically load it. And I also SHA hash it right here to get the hash code. And if any exceptions happen, I go ahead and log it and continue. You don't want to blow up just because one image fails. Images are going to fail. This is where obtain photo. I am determining if I already have the image. I'm calling the Flickr search API to get the URL from it, also the license. So this is where I check to see if the license is in one of my allowed licenses. If it is, then I go ahead and load the image. That's that function up there. And I basically return it. If not, then I'm gonna return none and I'm gonna up the error count. I like to always track errors, just give me an idea of what's, what's going wrong. This is a utility function to check to see if we should keep the image or not. We're passing in a URL that Flickr is giving me. I create the SHA hash so that I have that. I then build the path name. So this is where I'm gonna download the file to. The path that we're loading it to using an interpolated string the prefix, so that's like tropical or whatever I'm putting in front of it, the hash, and then the format, like a JPEG, PNG, whatever. And that lets Pillow know the format that it's, that it's saving it to. I append the URL and the path name to the sources, just so that if I'm writing out my sources file, you're gonna have that later. I check to see if it exists. If it exists, then it, it was there already, 
And this will happen. Sometimes images are often loaded to Flickr several, several times. I'll see that maybe a conference or something was open and people are downloading the stock art from it and multiple people are uploading this to Flickr. It's not like if you upload two exact images to YouTube videos, it, it, it stops you. So Flickr is quite happy to have multiple of the same image under the same Flickr ID. This is where we process the image. So if you've requested processing, it is going to do that here. We are going to crop and center. This is just code that crops a centered square out of it, does, does some math to find out where to crop. And then after we've cropped it, we've scaled it. So cropping is actually losing, cutting corners off, whereas scaling is stretching it. And sometimes in computer vision, it's okay to stretch something because a stretched cat is still gonna look like a cat. You don't wanna stretch GANs because you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna make the, the, the end result look quite odd. So on recognition tasks, don't stretch. Or I mean on recognition, so on recognition tasks, go ahead and stretch. On GAN tasks, don't distort the images. You want those to look really as good as possible. This is where we track the, pra the progress. I'm keeping track of the elapsed time and if it's time to update. And I also check to see if we have reached the maximum size download count and if that's true I return true and that causes us to exit. This is where we write the sources. This is a very simple just write CSV. Sometimes I would have probably used pandas to do this but that's kind of overkill. I wanted to really keep the number of packages that this uses down so I use the CSV package that's built into most distributions of Python. And we're almost done. This is the run. We go through, we, we log that we're starting, we reset the counts, and you call this walk function. This is part of the, the API to Flickr. And you're, you're basically going to, going to go through this thing. I haven't played with per page. I believe, I don't think that really matters for a automated access. If you're doing user interface, like putting this up onto a website of your own, you'd probably want to make this per page match your, your user interface. Then I loop through all of the photos. I get the URL like I did earlier. I obtain the photo. And if it's not none returned, I check to see if I should keep it and save it. So this is how I like to write my code so that it is actually pretty. You don't have any function that's really too deep or too complicated. My next step, and I know you should unit test first, but I'll probably put some unit tests around here so that as I extend its functionality, I'm not breaking my own, my own code. So this is the program. Was this useful to you? Did you enjoy the description? Definitely give me, give me a like if you like the, uh, the video. And if you're interested in all things machine learning, image processing, these things, and my class on deep learning, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.